Hey everybody, today we are talking about gimbals. If you don't know what they are, well, they are three axis machines type of thing to smooth out your video footage. I use them all the time. Uh, I have a few like this big guy here. This is the Ronin SC. Then over here we have a Weeble Lab and I have a mirrorless Fujifilm camera on it. As you can see how it works, it, uh, it really does a great job of stabilizing footage and they usually come with a little bit of a tripod so you can just place it down. But today, this one is cool because this could be the only gimbal that you need. You see, I have a bunch of them because they all kind of work differently. Some are better for traveling, some can hold more weight. And that's the thing, but the ones that hold more weight usually weigh more and they're not very portable. Well, this one here, this is the Moza Mini P. So that's what it's all about today. Moza Mini P, let's take a look. So what is the Moza Mini P? Just like those bigger ones, it's a three axis gimbal as well. As you can see, it comes in a nice little case here. I don't think you're gonna use a case very often unless you're gonna go and, and travel extensively with it because it kind of defeats a purpose because this is very portable. This actually folds up and when it's folded up, it's pretty small. It's about the, the size of a book. So I actually carry this in my backpack, in the back pocket of my backpack. That's how handy it is to use. And the beauty of this though, this is the kicker, is that certain gimbals like this guy here, this one will hold up to about five pounds for payload, but you can't put real light cameras on it. And what happens is you can't balance them properly. Balance is everything when it comes to a gimbal. This Mini P can actually go from 130 grams all the way up to 900 grams. So in imperial terms, that is about a quarter pound to two pounds. And as you can see, I have an iPhone 10 on here right now, so you can use your smartphone on here. You can use your action camera, uh, small mirrorless cameras, plus you can even use full frame mirrorless cameras depending on which lens you put on it. And that is pretty amazing. That's a, a huge envelope of weight of what you can use on this gimbal. I have an A7. Here it is with the A7 on it. I'm actually filming on the A7 right now. That's why I don't have it on the mini p right now so it's portable because it folds you can put anything on it up to two pounds what else is cool about it well how about a 20 hour run time yeah seriously it runs forever mind you you really want to make sure that you balance it properly and that applies to all three axis gimbals the better balance it is the longer that it'll run and the smoother it'll run because it's really not doing much other than making corrections opposed to using the motors actually to really move that camera around. The instruction booklet does tell you how to balance it, but I highly recommend that you watch the video that Moza has put out uh, on balancing the Mini P uh, in addition to reading it, but it's so much more helpful uh, watching the video, seeing how they do it. Once you see it once, you're like, okay, this is a cinch. And so yeah, make sure you watch that video if you get one of these Mini P's. Another thing about balancing is since you can put so many different types of devices on here, obviously every time you change your device, you're gonna have to rebalance it. And that's one thing that uh, I, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna say it's a knock against it because balancing is so important. And, but when you fold it up, when you unfold, you're gonna have to rebalance because in order to fold it up, you have to actually push some arms in and make it as compact as possible. So this is not something that you're going to uh, have in your backpack and then just whip it out and just turn it on and use it. You're gonna have to take it out, put it down on something level, put your device on and balance it and then use it. And then maybe put it back and fold it up 
put it back in, and repeat. So just be aware of that. And the same thing applies to if you're gonna go from a phone to a mirrorless camera or your action camera, you're gonna have to rebalance every time that you do it. But what I find handy though, and where I'm going to use this, is I like to do some travel videos, some of you might know, and I take quite a bit of gear. I like to do good videos. So certain times, depending on what we're doing, let's say I'm in a resort and uh, I want to go bowling and I want some really good footage. So I might bring my mirrorless camera and a gimbal. Other times I might be at the pool and I don't want to bring my, my good expensive mirrorless camera, but I know I always have my GoPro in my bag so I can just grab my GoPro and grab this and I can throw the GoPro on here, not for underwater shots, but throw the GoPro on here to get nice around the pool or beach area shots. And then at nighttime, maybe I want something that has a little better lower light and I might choose a different camera. So those are the type of instances that I'm gonna change my camera setups on here and that's how I'm gonna use it. Another cool thing is if you have a mirrorless camera set up on here, you can control some features. For instance, if you have a Sony mirrorless camera, you can control things like focus or autofocus, uh, your shutter and your record. And the best thing is if you have a Sony, they use an MSCS cable, multi-cable, and that comes with the Mini P. But if you use other cameras like Canon or Fujifilm, you can still control things with the Mini P except you need a different cable and you have to purchase that separately. Or you know what, a lot of times if I'm running and gunning, I just, just touch the camera, I hit record on it. Now let's talk about the control buttons. Uh, I'm not gonna go through every feature, very simple to use though. Uh, you have a joystick and the joystick is, as you can see, it moves up and down. You have a trigger, if I double click, it will reset the gimbal to the middle and the trigger also, if I press and hold, it turns it into a FPV. So it'll just point wherever I tilt it. If I double click and hold, now it fully locks the gimbal. These are great for crane shots or slider shots. You can just slide it across like so. Let's try to get that in focus there. Button-wise, we have all sorts of different features. Uh, you have a sport mode, and one thing that's really cool is we're gonna, we're gonna triple click, and now you go into inception mode. So now you go and you can use that joystick and you can turn your camera all the way around. It gives you some really cool shots with that. And this will work with a mirrorless camera. Check it out. There are some huge benefits to just using this with your phone. First of all, you download the Moza Genie app and you connect once and it just kind of finds it every time when you turn on the gimbal, you click on that app and up it comes. Now, this app gives you so much power to your phone's camera. First of all, there's all sorts of manual settings you can use with your phone camera now with this app, like you can have you know, different grid lines, you have zebras even for uh, proper exposure. You can go into all these manual settings, change your different output modes, different audio modes, you have audio meters on it. Another real cool feature, it has tracking abilities. So you hit the little icon with the, all these little squares on it and you just drag a box around your object you wanna track or person and that's it. You can see it live, how it'll actually track. And in this case here, I'm tracking my daughter. I'm not moving the gimbal, it's actually moving by itself. Whether uh, something goes up or down, it will track it. And it's up to you if you wanna hit record, you just hit record, you hit that okay button, it'll start recording and hit it to stop. Another thing is a time elapse capability. I don't do a lot of time elapse. Uh, I just find that they take too much time. But this one adds motion to it and it's so easy to do. You can do multi points. So here are a few examples. So you just go and you, you set one point, you move it to the next point, and then you hit OK. That's where you want your next point. And if, if that's fine with you, you, hit next. And how long do you want the time elapse to be? You want five minutes, you hit five minutes, you hit go, and you just 
set it and forget it. It just does its thing and the results are amazing. It, it's so easy and it adds so much uh, with that movement to it. So here's a great feature if you are using this for social media, for instance, for Instagram or you're vlogging or blogging, let's just put this to sleep. Just one little click and she's asleep now and I'm just going to loosen this. As you can see, my phone is on this carrier here. Okay, so this would be the same carrier that you would put your GoPro or your uh, Sony a7 or what other mirrorless camera you have. So, and then you would just slide it Now, for example, for this example, I'm not going to balance it, but I'm going to activate it again, and there it goes. So, uh, properly, you do want to balance it because this is going to have a different center of gravity to when you actually had it in landscape mode. So, this portrait mode. But now I could vlog, selfie mode, I can take vertical, and just look how much smoother that footage would be with this gimbal. And once I'm done, I can just take that out and slide that back in. That's pretty well balanced right there. And re-click. She's ready to go. So if you're thinking about getting a gimbal, maybe you don't have one, I would really consider getting something like this kind of like three in one uh, mini P opposed to something like this big guy. It all depends on your needs though. If you have a larger camera or heavier lenses, you're going to need something larger. But for a lot of people, let's say you are in the market for a, a cell phone gimbal, but you also have a GoPro and maybe a small point and shoot, like maybe like a Sony a6000 or 6500 or something like that. Well, this is kind of a no-brainer because it's about $199. Uh, so it's a lot less money than those other ones that I showed you, but it covers the entire gamut. So you have your cell phone gimbal and you have everything else. So I'll leave a link in the description as well as a link to the balancing video that I told you about. Really watch that before you actually do anything and it'll make life a lot easier. I hope you enjoyed the video and happy gimbling. I don't even know if that's a word. Gimbling? Gimbling? I don't know. Gimbling! See ya!